Chinese and Russian are considered to be the most difficult languages in the world. I've studied Chinese for three years and Russian is my native language. In this video I'm going to compare the difficulty of these languages in every aspect like pronunciation, writing and grammar. In the end we are going to find out which language is more difficult, so grab your cup of tea or coffee and let's start. So we are beginning with the alphabet. As you might know, Russian isn't based on the Latin script but on the Cyrillic one. The Cyrillic alphabet is used in various languages that are spoken in Eastern Europe, like Serbian, Bulgarian, Ukrainian and Central Asia, like Kazakh, Kyrgyz. One of the main reasons why Russian can be challenging to learn for non-native speakers is its Cyrillic alphabet, which differs from the Latin script used in English and many other languages. There are 33 letters in the Russian alphabet, 21 consonants, 10 vowels and 2 letters letters that don't make any sounds when using separately. Some of the letters in the Cyrillic alphabet have similar shapes or sounds that resemble letters in the Latin alphabet. For example, this word. Try to read it aloud. Quot has the letter K in Russian K, O in Russian O and the letter T in Russian T. However, there are more letters which differ significantly, and at first it will be a great difficulty to learn to differentiate them from the Latin letters. For example, this letter. It's not P, it's R. This letter isn't H, it's N. Or this letter. It's U. There isn't any alphabet in Chinese. Chinese is written using characters. There are thousands of them, and each character represents a specific meaning rather than a sound. You need to learn about 2,500 characters to watch a movie or read a book without any problems. Let's take the word to learn or to study. In Chinese, it's sui si. The word consists of two characters, sui, study, and si, exercise, practice or the word doctor. In Chinese it's Yishen. As you can see on the screen, the word also consists of two characters Yi, medicine or cure, and Shen to be born, grow up, to be alive and so on. So I think in this round Chinese wins one point, as it's easier to learn 33 letters rather than over 2000 characters. The next thing I want to discuss is pronunciation. As I've already said, there are 21 consonants in Russian, but these consonants can be pronounced as soft and hard. I'll give some examples to make it clear what I'm speaking about. Compare the word rosa Море. Do you hear the difference in the sound R? In the first word rosa, the initial sound R is hard, while in the second word море, it's soft, as it is followed by a vowel Е. The difference between soft and hard consonants is crucial in Russian, because it can change the meaning of words. For example, the word мел, which means chalk in English, is pronounced with a hard sound. However, if the consonant is softened, as in the word мел, it becomes a completely different word that means shallow. Besides, vowels are pronounced differently depending on their position, which can cause difficulties in learning Russian. For example, the letter O is pronounced as O when it appears in a stressed syllable, but it is pronounced as R in an unstressed syllable. Let's take the word milk. In Russian it will be Malako. As you can hear in the word Malako, the first two letters are pronounced like A whereas the final O should be pronounced like O, without any reduction, because it is stressed – malako. <coughs> Russian also has several sounds that do not exist in English, French, Portuguese or Spanish, such as the rolled R sound and the U vowel sound, like in the word ryba, mys, prigat. And the biggest obstacle which Russian language learners face is stress. Well, it's obvious that learners are constantly facing stress, but here I mean the term stress that describes the relative loudness or force with which a syllable is pronounced. In Russian, stress can fall on any syllable in a word, and the position of the stress can change depending on the word form. For example, the word stall, table, the stress falls on o, but in the instrumental case под столом, under the table the stress shifts to the second syllable. To learn how to pronounce characters in Chinese, you should also learn pinyin. Pinyin is a system for writing Chinese in Latin letters. 
This system is used for teaching as well as learning Chinese. Thanks to this system, you can easily learn how to pronounce words correctly. However, the most essential thing is to pay attention to tones. The tones in Chinese are denoted by diacritics, which are written above the vowel in the syllable. The first tone is high and flat, like in the word gao. The second tone is a rising one, yo, zhu. The third tone is a dipping tone, xiao. And the fourth tone is a falling tone, like in kan. So it's important to memorize words together with their tones. It especially plays a key role in speaking. Usage as a wrong tone can change the meaning of a word completely. For example, if you want to say my mother is an engineer, you have to use the linking verb shi with the falling tone. And if you say wo mama shi gongchen shi, it won't be correct. The verb shi usually means to make or to cause, but in this context it doesn't make sense to use it. So you should say wo mama shi gongchen shi. On the whole, Chinese pronunciation requires not so much learning the sounds of individual syllables as memorizing tones. Summing up, I guess there isn't any winner in this round, as pronunciation in Chinese and Russian represents a difficulty in learning for non-native speakers. And for the most interesting part, grammar. Let's start from Russian, as it's my native language. First of all, looking at Russian syntax, it's important to say that there isn't any strict word order. Russian has a flexible word order, which means you can modify it to change the meaning of a sentence, or if you want to add emphasis. I'll illustrate it using some examples. So you can say, Я смотрю интересный фильм сейчас. I am watching an interesting movie now. Also, you can say Сейчас я смотрю интересный фильм. Now I am watching an interesting movie. Also, you can say Смотрю я интересный фильм сейчас. Or Интересный фильм я смотрю сейчас. And so on. You can make a lot of modifications to this sentence. Another interesting thing is that all the nouns are divided into three categories according to the gender neuter, feminine and masculine. For example, the word stool, chair, is masculine. The word akno, window, is neuter. The word ruchka, pen, is feminine. So you have to learn the gender of each noun individually. Adjectives, pronouns and verbs in Russian must also agree in gender with the noun they modify or refer to. If a noun is feminine, any adjectives, pronouns or verbs must also be in the feminine form. For example, let's take the adjective beautiful, красивый. You want to say a beautiful skirt, so skirt is feminine and singular. So you should say красивая юбка. If you change the number of the noun and make it plural, you have to change the form of the adjective. So beautiful skirts, красивые юбки. But that's just the tip of the iceberg compared to the system of cases. In Russian there are six cases for nouns and adjectives. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, instrumental and prepositional. If you are learning German, you know what it is. If you are unaware of what cases are, let me illustrate this with a couple of examples. Each case has its own endings which are added to the stem of the word to show its grammatical function in the sentence. For example, mother is at home, mama doma. The word mother is used in the nominative case. Give a cup to mother, dai mami chashku. In this sentence, the word mother is used in the dative case. You can see an ending here, mami. Mother isn't here, mamy niet zdes. The word mother is used in the genitive case. Again, we can see a different ending U, mamy. I think we can stop here, as I see that your head is starting to reel. There is also quite a complex system of verb conjugation for different tenses, moods and aspects. Nightmare. I think it's enough about Russian, let's move on to Chinese. Chinese has a relatively simple grammar in terms of word order. The general word order in Chinese, as in English, subject, predicate, object. But it can vary depending on the emphasis of the sentence. Luckily, Chinese doesn't have the category of case, gender or number. So if you want to say a black suit, you just say If you want to say black suits, it will be the same. Chinese doesn't have verb conjugations for different tenses. 
so you shouldn't cram all those never-ending rules with exceptions as in Russian. The absence of verb inflections in Chinese means that the verbs are not conjugated based on the subject or number, which makes Chinese grammar simpler in some ways. But you should pay more attention to the word order and context. For example, let's take the sentence I like coffee. 我喜欢咖啡. If we change the person or number, the verb won't change its form. He likes coffee. 他喜欢咖啡. They like coffee. 他们喜欢咖啡. Speaking of tenses, the form of the verb stays the same, whether it's the past tense, present or future. Great, isn't it? You don't have to learn the inflections as in Russian. If you want to describe an action which happened in the past, you should just add the particle le. For example, I ate breakfast. 我吃早饭了. Or she bought strawberries yesterday. 昨天她买了草莓. When I was learning Chinese, I didn't face any difficulty in understanding grammar rules. Everything was quite simple and easy to catch from the first explanation. I think that in this round the point goes to Russian, as Russian grammar is more complex and flexible, and mastering the rules of word cases and verb conjugations takes a lot of time and effort. As we can see, Chinese and Russian have their own peculiarities and challenges in terms of pronunciation, writing and grammar. Both represent their own difficulties and require significant effort and practice to master them. But if you are motivated, nothing will stop you. If you still have any doubts about how to learn English, Spanish, German, Chinese or Russian, you can take a couple of private lessons with us in our online school English with Net. Use the link to our Instagram in the description below and write to us straight away if you have any questions. See you in the next video. Bye!